I know you heard of the first ladies, people like Michelle, Melania, and of course Dr. Jill. But up until about 90 years ago, the president's wife wasn't that well known. She was occasionally seen, but rarely heard. That was until Eleanor Roosevelt came along. Eleanor was born in 1884 in New York City, in Manhattan. Sadly, by the time she was 10, both her mother and father had passed away. With no parents, she became very close to her grandmother and her Uncle Teddy. Eleanor was the niece of President Theodore Roosevelt. Yes, she was born with the last name Roosevelt. And her husband, Franklin, was technically a distant cousin. So yes, her name was always Eleanor Roosevelt. Okay, so she marries Franklin, he gets involved in New York politics, and she's a quiet housewife. Then, President Woodrow Wilson makes him assistant secretary of the Navy, and they move to D.C. World War I breaks out, and Eleanor gets restless. She starts working with the Red Cross and the Navy. She started attending services for soldiers who had died in battle. She wanted to make sure that someone was there for every funeral. So she would go to Arlington Cemetery every morning to attend. In 1932, Franklin runs for president, years before FDR suffered from polio and had been one use of his legs. Eleanor hit the campaign trail on his behalf, talking to voters and sharing her thoughts. By the time Franklin becomes president, Eleanor is a known voice in America. She becomes the first first lady to hold her own press conferences. Since female reporters were traditionally banned from presidential press conferences, she bans male reporters from hers. Can you say girl boss move? Eleanor writes a daily column for the newspapers, does a weekly radio show, and continues to travel on her husband's behalf. She gains the nickname, the president's eyes, ears, and legs. In 1939, she invites African-American opera singer Marian Anderson to the White House. Anderson had an upcoming performance at Howard University. Since so many people wanted to see the show, the folks at Howard asked D.A.R., the Daughters of the American Revolution, if they could use the Constitution Hall for the event. They say no, because only white performers were allowed. Eleanor gets mad. She quits the D.A.R. and coordinates a free concert to be held at the Lincoln Memorial. A crowd of 75,000 people, both black and white, stood elbow to elbow that day to enjoy Anderson's performance. Later that year, Marian Anderson performed in Richmond at the mosque, now known as the Autria Theater. Eleanor Roosevelt was there and presented her an award of achievement from the NAACP. Who knew there was so much cool history right here in town? As First Lady, Eleanor Roosevelt fought for racial justice, workers' rights, and the welfare of children. After her husband's death, President Truman asked her to represent the U.S. at the United Nations. While there, she helped create the Human Rights Commission, a global group whose mission is to protect human rights around the world. They're still going strong to this day. Eleanor used to say, the purpose of life is to live it. With the way she lived, she truly improved the lives of many others. Eleanor Roosevelt, our history is her story.